All right, so welcome to this Mastermind live call. Uh, my name is Marcus Walfordson, and today we're going to talk about video analysis. And we'll be learning from the 2020 MLS champions, which is something I would have loved doing before, uh, before uh, you know, I started doing video analysis for a Scandinavian top team back in 2015. I was crap, uh, but, uh, you know, I did something. So um, hopefully you will enjoy this. But, you know, back when I kind of jumped into video analysis, there was no mastermind program. Uh, you know, this place where we have a stress-free inspiration, education, um, you know, going in, watching topics that you're interested in, uh, watching them back afterwards if you don't have time at the moment. You can even send questions in beforehand. You can uh, go in, watch them afterwards. You can, you know, chat and email with us all the time. Um, and you get plenty of surprises along the way. We already have a surprise guest coming on. And every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, you can just log on and be part of a group of people just like you. So uh, it's pretty awesome. You know, coaches coming in, uh, sport executives, people who want to improve themselves and their career. So if you're watching this part of the live call on YouTube, uh, go to marcuswolfson.com slash mastermind and sign up today because the question is how much is it worth for you to have a group of people that can kind of help you along your way in your career? Or as differently, can you afford to not join this mastermind program? So, you know, I don't think you actually can afford to not join. So uh, invest in yourself, invest in your career and invest in your future. Go to marcuswolfson.com slash mastermind and sign up now. And speaking of now, let's introduce our guest today. Uh, this is someone who was an integral part of the 2020 MLS Cup winning Columbus crew team. Uh, currently is coaching at one of the uh, better youth clubs or best youth clubs in Washington State. He even won a trophy that is bigger than himself, I think, at least from the pictures I've seen. So uh, leave you. Um, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, and and thanks to everybody for for taking some time out of your day to join us. Um, uh, bearing in mind kind of my my range of experiences here, from you know players who basically never kicked a ball to those who you know represented their country in World Cups. I'm um, hoping there's something in here for for everybody um, that you can you can take back to your environment, um, regardless of the level that you currently work at. Uh, Marcus did mention that there are no non-football coaches um, kind of on the call, which is helpful because I was struggling to think about how to frame a lot of these references in general terms rather than sport specific terms. But it actually helps a lot that everybody here is kind of speaking the same language in terms of, of that. So um, I will go ahead and share my screen here and hopefully Marcus will be good. Can you see that? Okay. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and get started here. Um, again, we're talking about, you know, the analysis process today. If at any point you have questions, um, you know, feel free to unmute and, and kind of ask. Um, trying to figure out if I, I can still see the chat. So if you want to throw it in the chat as well, um, you can do that. So let we'll get started. Just, yeah. Just let me interrupt and do a kind of a, uh, for for uh, like clarification for uh, what do you call it? like just process wise you know if you have a question I would say now during the presentation put it in the chat and then save everything else to later to afterwards or <clears throat> for free kind of discussion round you can go back and you can show and stuff sounds good yeah that, that's that works for me so we'll get started here um, I'd like to start with kind of this idea of, of objective knowledge versus subjective experience, right? I'm sure a lot of people here know uh, who Raymond Verheijen is and, and are at least somewhat familiar with his work. If not, I um, highly encourage you to read um, his books on football periodization and football brain training. Uh, this obviously will not be a copy of, of one of his courses, but, you know, forgive me for this, but this is kind of a logical starting point for, for anything in a sport like ours that has so many ideas, ideologies, you know, different pathways and applications. Um, the idea of the analysis process kind of follows this, the same path of finding objective references 
um, to guide subjective applications. So let's throw this on here. Okay, objectivity is is scientific. It, it leads to you know repeatability in terms of um, the process, which gives you consistency and sustainability. So this you know this philosophy has to be based. Again, you can see the bullet points here. It's conceptual. It's universal. There's it's factual. Ideally, there's no gray areas. Um, it's objective, as objective as possible, you know, no opinions, no, I think this, well, thoughts are great, but, you know, what, what is the game actually telling us? Subjectivity, on the other hand, that's, it's contextual, right? So one-time application that leads to a given result based on external factors, and, and it's the second step after objectivity, so you go from left to right on the screen here, but if you skip straight to it without kind of an objective you know, scientific reference-based framework, you, you get chaos. Sometimes these things work, sometimes they don't. You never really know why. And, and it's, it's, you know, makes it a lot more difficult to, to be sustainable in our coaching. Um, <clears throat> so I would say the, the biggest thing is don't copy somebody else's subjective application. Okay, you see coaching courses and conventions, people go and they write down, you know, they go to all these sessions and they, they make these diagrams, they write down where the cones are. Okay, and, and that's, you know, that's one thing, but instead look for these overarching references and look for, for objective frameworks that can guide your application regardless of the environment. And this is something that, you know, that Raymond is big on and, and you know, this idea of, of these coaching education should be about downloading these references into your brain. And, and so I'll, I'll kind of aim to give you the what in terms of analyzing and, and you can supply the how based on your environment. You'll see some subjective application stuff just because I feel like it is interesting to see. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have to be able to, to put it into your own environment. So the starting point for everything in football is having vision and having a vision. So having vision is being able to see philosophically and then having a vision is kind of the, the application of that philosophy. All right. So you have to know what you want the game to look like, what you want your team to do, but you also have to be able to interpret how close your team is and what they can actually do and, and how, you know, how they get to that, that kind of gold standard that you're thinking of. And, and the only way that you can get there is through analysis, right? So analysis is kind of, for me, it's the first and last step of, of the coaching process, which is the coaching process, a four-step system. Um, <clears throat> I'll just let this run through. Marcus and I have gone back and forth on this a few times. There's, there's some other right aspects within this, um, different words that we can use. So the ones, that, the way I put it is analyze, theorize, conceptualize, and then uh, execute at the end. Everything, again, starts and, and ends with analysis um, because it's really important to, to have these, uh, you know, to have these ideas and, and philosophies kind of ingrained and, and you know, um, you know, ideally what you're going to get because the process is the same, right? So your analysis is objectively framed performance based. So it's based on what you're seeing and it's an honest reflection. So it's always tough. Sometimes and you, you see what you want to see, but you need to see what's actually happening. Right. And then you have theories. So you get your, your game model, your role models and your ideas from this analysis. And then from there you conceptualize or you transmit the theory. How do you plan your sessions? And then how do you implement them on the field? And then execution is the actual on the field, on the grass. Um, the other the other way that, that Marcus and I have kind of gone back and forth on this, you can look at it and evaluate, prioritize, prepare and execute. So I mean, executes the same and really evaluate and analyze are the same. But um, these are are different ways that you can look at kind of the coaching process as kind of this four step system. And, and you kind of have to be aware of how much time you have to spend on all of these different aspects. Um, you know, if you work alone at the youth level or, or in a place where you don't have an assistant coach or you don't have, you know, all the, the bells and whistles of the, the top professional level, um, you know, you, you have to kind of be aware that you're, you can only spend time on one at a time if it's just you, um, but don't neglect any of the four steps if you want to have a complete and thorough process, right? And, and it's, it's kind of, you know, at different moments, you might emphasize different, different parts of it based on where you are, but all four of these aspects are important for, again, a, a thorough coaching process. So uh, when I worked with the, the crew as, as their video analysis coach, kind of my primary area of responsibility was analysis, right? It was this top, this top part. And like I said, that's I take it very seriously because it's kind of the start and the end of the coaching process. 
Um, and like we covered before, right? If you don't have that vision, you don't have that ability to see what's happening, then you don't have uh, don't have something to guide kind of the overarching process and philosophy. So zooming in specifically on this analysis process, right? There's two different um, branches of it. There's self-analysis and opposition analysis. So if you're looking at the training week, um, kind of analysis guides the entire process from, from training to match day. So um, take care to, to separate analysis from prediction, right? So you can only be sure about what you see right now or what you have seen, you know, in, in past games. Um, when we're talking about opposition analysis, and even self-analysis, right? You can't really, can't really predict what's going to happen in the future. Nobody's got the magic crystal ball. You, you might have a good idea and you might be able to, to be pretty accurate, especially after a while when you see certain things. Um, but particularly when you're, you're analyzing an opponent that you're playing in the future, right? You can't predict what they'll do, but, but as the analyst, right, if you've done your job, then you should have a clear picture of what they've done and you can use that to inform, although not dictate, um, your preparation. So even within, you know, what you see, there's, there's plenty of discrepancies and, and kind of subjectivity within it. Is the team playing 4-2-3-1, 4-4-2, 4-4-1-1, et cetera? Um, you know, you can see how quickly and easily we get lost. We, we lose the objectivity and we get lost in the subjective. So trying to keep our, our analysis factual and, and objective is really important. Um, and observation is the natural kind of precursor to analysis. So you have to watch, you have to watch carefully. You have to, you know, be able to, to zoom in on certain things, both literally and figuratively. Um, and thankfully these days, you know, there's plenty of software that can help you with your, your analysis and can help you tag clips and categorize and, and then you can go back and again zoom in very specifically on I want to watch uh, every goal kick I want to watch every corner kick I want to watch you know you can do that a lot easier these days um, and I, I think there's there's room here a quick word on, on three different types of analysts that you'll find at clubs right so we have data analysts so these are the analytics expert uh, mathematical insight really good with numbers math all the, the different charts and stuff you see that they draw up um, modeling right every top level club has at least one one data analyst these days sometimes multiple okay you got to get these uh these pure analysts who are kind of right tactical analysts who can be good theorists so they can um you know they can usually theorize based on the analysis but they don't really have expertise in in the concept and execution pieces of the coaching process and then the final one here, the third one is the analyst coach, right? And they have um, this, it's becoming far more common now um, where you have, you know, I put myself in this category because my, my background is coaching. Um, again, a lot of people, the, the data analyst, a lot of times their background is, it, they have a heavy background in, in the math, mathematical side, these tactical analysts, they, they, a lot of them haven't coached or played or, or only did very briefly and, and, you know, but the ideally you have somebody whose background is is coaching. The, what I, the way I'd make the distinction a little bit clearer is that all coaches can analyze on some level, but not all analysts can coach. Right. So if you can do both, then you'll be able to contribute to this again this overall coaching process. Uh, it's becoming increasingly common in the modern game, um, and and you know this idea of, of being a laptop coach. I put it there in quotes. Um, you know, if you look at modern clubs and managers at, at the top levels of the game, they understand that the importance of analysis and they dedicate their time and, and their staff's time to ensuring that they, they get it right, as well as hiring people who, you know, on the analysis team who can provide that insight. Um, the best staffs, if you have the luxury of hiring an actual team of analysts, again, at the top, top level, you know, you get multiple, you get teams of five to however many analysts. Um, you'll have all, all of these different types of analysts on your, your analysis team and your analysis department, so, so to speak. Um, the head of the department ideally will be somebody, again, with this coaching background who knows what information and pictures to kind of transmit to the other coaches and players and, and how to transmit it, you know, how, how to coach a training session based on this opposition analysis that you've, you've put together. Um, so, the, again, these three different types. And by now, everybody's kind of seen this, this next chart, the four phases of the game. Um, but, you know, it's, again, it's the logical structure of, of football. So you have the game in four distinct but fluid phases because you can't really separate 
you know, our sport is, is very, very fluid and very, um, you know, uh, it's global. I would say it's everything all at once. It's not one thing. It's not another thing. It's, it's everything. And, and obviously got set pieces as kind of this, this fifth, uh, fifth phase in the middle here. Um, and, and it, this should guide your analysis, just like it guides, you know, game model creation, training session design. You see this all the time and, and people use it. Uh, it's pretty ubiquitous. And I think for, for analysis, the same thing, right? In attack and defense, you have kind of the thirds of the field that will provide a framework for player and team behaviors in each. Um, the way you attack in your own third, you know, can be distinct from the way you attack in the final third, for example, because of the context of the actions, AKA where the goal is, uh, how close you are to your goal, how far away you are from the other team's goal. Transition moments have kind of either actions to exploit an opponent. So you have counterattack or counter pressing or actions to kind of help you settle into the next phase. So this idea of regaining control or, or, you know, dropping back into a block, organizing yourself. And then again, set pieces are kind of this, this fifth phase um, for analysis purposes, they, especially they have kind of a special area of focus. It's really the only time you can treat our sport like American football or basketball, where you have these specific schematics and can draw up plays and, um, you know, big clubs have, have set piece coaches and set piece analysts specifically. And, you know, I mean, you see like Liverpool hired a throw in coach, you know, there's different things like that. So um, the way, <clears throat> excuse me, the way you use this framework will kind of differ depending on whether you're doing self analysis or opposition analysis. So for the opposition, it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit more objective and observation based. What do they do? Uh, what are the patterns? What are they good at? What are they not so good at? Um, you can, you can kind of chart runs, you can diagram certain things, um, you know, for yourself, your own team, self-analysis, the, the process should be based on your game model. It's a little bit more subjective because now you get this, this, the ideas and the philosophy, the, the, um, the, the subjective art of coaching, right? You get um, kind of your, your opinions and thoughts into it. Um, you can, you, you apply these objective references to your own team as well, right? Are you getting what you want? Is, does your team spend a lot of time um, attacking in the, in the final third? So do you spend a lot of time in the front half? Do you spend more time in the build out? Right, that, that also goes down to a philosophical level and what you want to see. So do you want your team to be in their own half of the field a lot or the other half of the field or, or this middle third? Are you going to emphasize counterattacking? Are you going to emphasize, you know, so all, all of these different things. Um, just be careful that your observation and your analysis remain unaffected by the emotion of the fact that you're looking at your own team. So you have to be honest and reflect on what's actually happening rather than just what you want to see. It's important to know what you want to see, but don't think that it's automatically happening just because that's what you want, because a lot of times it won't. And that's where you get a lot. Of, that's also where the, again, the, the data analysis comes in where you can get somebody to help you with the pure numbers and, and all that. And even, even if you're analyzing by yourself, you can still chart things and you can still come up with numbers. Um, it's just obviously, again, it becomes harder when, when you're, when you're by yourself. Um, in terms of kind of the, the material you work with, right. The cliche, the picture is worth more than a thousand words. So uh, a couple, a uh, couple of literal pictures here and, and some ideas surrounding pictures. So picture, right. Picture is worth more than a thousand words. Video is your most important tool. It's your most uh, useful analytical tool. Video doesn't lie, right? It, it's, you have to be able to show your players examples. There's no real valid excuses these days. You know, cameras and software exist for all budget levels uh, and all resources. You can use Dropbox, WeTransfer, have video sessions instead of training on the field every day. So up here in the Northwest, you know, it can rain a lot and it gets kind of miserable. So sometimes, um, you know, I will just say, all right, this Thursday, we're not going to go on the field. Let's just meet at this place and we'll, we'll just watch video for, for a while. Um, you know, I, I like to, with players of a certain age, you can text them clips, right? I, I like to, to do that. Players love to watch themselves play, right? It's just kind of, even at the top levels, they, all, they love being able to see themselves. And so if you're not using video, then you're not analyzing properly. And automatic cameras are very affordable and pretty much, you know, they're everywhere on youth soccer sidelines these days. So you see them every game that I coach, there's one or two cameras on the field. It's just, 
you know, again, they're for the budget levels and, and all sorts of resource uh, levels, you can, there's always a way to get video. And then once you have the material, right, it's on you as a coach to use your time wisely. And, and again, remembering that four-step coaching process and how much time you spend on each and where you are and, and how, what you're focusing on, on, a, on a, in a particular day, you know, changes from, from day to day and week to week based on where you are. Um, so a couple pictures, right? So this is, uh, again, just a setup of, of, looks like it was a game that I was analyzing an opponent. Um, the second picture here, this was a, a setup um, that I had, a view that I had in Phoenix, um, preseason game for the crew. Um, and then this was, uh, this next picture here was the, was the home stadium. This is the old stadium now. Um, the new stadium um, that came in the year after I left, but this was where I, where I watched games from, um, home games from uh, when I was working in Columbus. So very good, uh, very good viewpoint. And honestly, one of the best ones in the league. I think that we went some places where, where the view was not, uh, not great for the analysis purposes. Right. And obviously, like I said, there will be some subjective stuff in here. I know people don't feel like they've gotten their, their money's worth unless they see some examples, even if it's subjective based on your own sort of situation. So I've um, got a couple different videos here. Um, this one is just a, just a few different examples. So I'll just go through them. This was a youth team that I coached. Again, uh, this was, I had a parent who liked to video the game. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll go up in the stands and, and hold the camera. And this is how I analyze games. I think this was uh, an example of something that I texted a player that I sent to him directly, focusing on this center back here uh, where the, the red dotted line starts working on his positioning. So I had the center back has the ball. Where should you be, right? If we want to play the ball to the goalkeeper and through you. Um, so again, just something that I, I sent him real quick, a couple of examples, Helped him out a lot, and in the next uh, in the next couple of games, he did it much better. So, just an example of ways that that having uh, having that analysis can help you. Same team. This one was more of a general principle video. Um, same same player actually, but look again. You can see just just different putting text on on the video, having some form of telestration. I didn't have. A lot of fancy software at this time, so you can see. I mean, there's not there's not a lot going on here, right? It's a freeze frame with some text and some some very basic lines. Um, so just it can be done at all levels, all sorts of budgets. There's no again, there's no real excuse for not doing it these days. <clears throat> Another example here. I'll just let this one roll. Uh, so looking at how do we exploit gaps in the in the back line, different areas that we can get into the attack. Some of the camera work was eh, not the best, but you know you get what you pay for, and I didn't pay him. So this is from a training session with the crew. So just to, you know we would analyze training like this a lot as well. Um, a few different. Different examples of just the principles we're working on in this possession game and, and just looking at this was a really good sequence. So we wanted to highlight it. Uh, I think I posted this on Twitter, actually, this video, something like 30, 30 to 40 passes in a row. Um, it's just a good, a good picture. And then this is from a game. All right. So this is this was the higher end, right? This was in Seattle here, actually. Um, so you can see the, the, the angle, the camera, everything's kind of top class. You see the telestrations a little bit better. I was using Coach Paint, which is kind of the, the gold standard um, of, of telestration software for coaching and just looking at different, right? How many passes in the back half? How many passes in the front half? And then you get kind of this run um, eventually when it, when it develops. A little acceleration. And then the runs here, one near post, one far post finish. And then same thing here with the crew. This was a preseason game right off the kickoff. I want to say 31 seconds into the game, we scored a goal here. So just looking at different concepts, this line of three, we build up. <clears throat> 
this was a this was a, a big thing for us here. And then breaking this first line, these diagonal passes, and I playing between the lines, track to one side, switch to the opposite side, good run from the outside back around the outside, good finish. Twelve passes in a row, goal. Thirty three seconds into the game. Uh, this one is uh, more opposition analysis. So this was actually part of my um, part, part of an assignment for the um, USSF A license that I'm currently finishing. Um, so just looking at a few different at a few different things. Again, this data is is what I did. I did this myself, so it's all by hand. So you get uh, you, you still are able to get this kind of data analysis, even if you're doing it yourself. It just takes a lot of time. Um, different kind of diagrams. What do they do? How do they, you know, what are the trends that you see? And then ideally, of course, you have the video that goes along with it. So just a few different observations of, I was analyzing New York City in this, so in the team in blue, this is the MLS Cup final from, from last year. Um, and just how, how they were able to break Portland down. And, and basically the assignment was how would I, prepare my team to play against New York city. So just looking at different, uh, different aspects. And again, it's all kind of based on my game model and my ideas. So it's all has to be based on what your team wants to do. Um, but just, you know, how are, is your team going to, what, how is your team going to use what the other team does to help you win the game basically. So these are just a few, I'm just letting this roll. It's just a few different examples of Different ways to present information, different different um, ways that you can either show things to your coaching staff or even to the players, right? And then obviously you have to make that distinction between what am I going to show the coaches, what am, what is important for the players to know, because um, the the answer won't be the same. It won't be the same, right? It won't be all the information you give to the coaches won't be the same information you give to the players because you don't want to overload them with things that they just don't need to know so again let this clip run through just looking at a few different different examples here and this was part of um just a few minutes of what ended up being um, a pretty extensive project so it's just sort of uh, a, a couple phases of the of the attack here and again, when you're looking at it in depth, so when you're when you're explaining it and you have to stop it and look at a few different things, and then here's examples of this, this trend that I saw. Here's an example of the way I like to structure it a lot of times with the opposition analysis is um, you have a, a clip of what they want to do and then a clip of how you stop them from doing it. So that's what you've seen here, the, the goal kicks and then this, this back half buildup as well. It's a clip of what do they want to do and then how do we stop them from doing it? <clears throat> And again, all four phases of the game, five phases, if you include set pieces um, and based on kind of your, your, your vision and, and the vision that you have for your team, also known as a game model, right? So based on your game model. And I think this is the last one. I know this is dragging on a little bit, but it's just, a few different examples here. <clears throat> all right Let's scroll through this a little quicker here there we go that was the last one so that's basically it um open it up to any questions here that anybody has thank you leave you i think that was uh very cool uh i have a couple questions for sure 
Um, now, this is where we're going to end everything for the people who watch this on YouTube. So uh, if you want to be part of this and ask questions on these presentations, uh, make sure you go to marcuswolferson.com slash mastermind, register today. Uh, we look forward to having you in this room next week.